Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 128 on Now You Know. This episode was brought to you by our amazing, wonderful, awesome Patreon supporters. Thank you so much to all of you. We couldn't do this show without you. Also brought to you by the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott in Schaumburg, Illinois. I've stayed there myself. Friendliest people I've ever met. And they've got solar power, which powers their hotel. So Jesse, I was on Discord this week, which is a Patreon perk that we offer to our viewers. And uh, someone was chatting with me and he said like, hey, do you have a second to, to voice chat, mm -hmm. which is something we can actually do on Discord? And I was like, never tried that before. So I did. And we voice chatted for a while, which is really cool. And he pointed out that he's a Republican and that he felt like other Republicans who watch us may not feel like they're invited to be part of this community. So that got me thinking. And I wanted to point out to everyone watching that Jesse and I are free independent thinkers who are going to look at everything objectively and speak to you as intelligent human beings who want to help make our planet a healthy, safe place to live. Neither of us belong to a political party and we welcome everyone to join our community. I personally am constantly challenging my worldview. Okay, I think that that's an important thing to do for everyone should be doing this. Constantly look at what the opposition to your held belief is, hear them out, think about it, do some research, think about it some more, and then evaluate your position. That's what we sort of hope to do with this show while also just constantly trying to hit the truth as much as possible. All right, so let's get to a Tesla story. <laughs> this week's Sentry Mode came out and we wanted to check out what it does. We haven't gotten it Laser on guns. You think it's laser guns? Absolutely. Right? What are the laser guns doing in my... Why did I get laser guns for my car if it's not going to be able to start shooting them all over the place? You got laser guns? No. No. <laughs> Tesla announced that if a minimal threat is detected, such as someone leaning on a car, sentry mode switches to an alert state and displays a message on the touchscreen warning that its cameras are recording. If a more severe threat is detected, such as someone breaking a window, sentry mode switches to an alarm state, which activates the car alarm, increasing the brightness of the center display and plays music at maximum volume from the car's audio system. I thought at this point it'd be good to show what is on the screen. So this is what's on the screen. It looks like HAL 9000 from uh, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm a little concerned that we put a self-aware, super intelligent computer into the car. I mean, can you imagine doing this? Like, uh... Please, Model 3, summon out of the garage. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Did, they didn't put Hal in the car. That's a picture of Hal. Oh, that's not... No. I think that Elon is being a little high-minded of their potential thieves because, I mean, I don't know how many car thieves have seen 2001 A Space Odyssey and who are going to get the reference and then be like, cool reference, I'm not going to steal your car, man. <laughs> like, I don't know how many cinemaphiles <laughs> are stealing cars. I think we should go to our friend Raj, who showed a really good example of sentry mode and the alarm music that plays. So take it away, Raj. Okay, so right now we're going to simulate, because it's really loud, I want to give you an idea of just how loud the alarm system is, but I'm going to have to roll up the windows. Um, and I put my cameraman inside the car and we're gonna roll up the windows and uh, uh, enjoy. Thanks. Enjoy getting broken into. <laughs> So hopefully you didn't go deaf on that, but you just had to know it is loud, like really, really loud. Uh, no message from the wife, so I'm not in trouble. That's good. So if the if the movie references don't throw you off, it's going to be the very loud, uh, spooky music. Right. So I mean, I mean that's good because it that's basically as loud as you can possibly get. And you know, if you imagine a window is broken, that's going to be playing throughout your entire neighborhood. Right. And I mean, unlike a car alarm today, which is just like whoop, whoop, and everyone's gotten so used to it that they don't even pay attention, right. this, I think, will actually turn heads. Right. It's so off that you're going to be like, 
who the heck is playing that music right now but in the middle of the night? A couple cool features that they have in here, which I don't think people may understand. So if a car switches to alarm state, owners will also receive an alert from their Tesla mobile app, notifying them that an incident has occurred. That's really cool mm. because you're going to get an instant notification. You can run out if you're nearby. Um, the second thing is they'll be able to download a video recording of an incident, which begins 10 minutes prior to the time that the threat was detected by inserting a formatted USB drive into their car before they enable sentry mode. Let's be clear about this. It's going to record, but only if you've done the right steps like we showed in our Model 3 tip of the week a few weeks ago um, by making a USB drive, formatting it correctly, putting it into the, the front USB port. Right. And I mean, some people have said, oh, the thief's just going to take the USB stick. I kind of doubt it as soon as the yeah, music starts rush. blasting. Yeah. Um, also, I mean, there's a bunch of things that you could do to try and like hide the uh, USB stick with like a USB cord extender or something like that. Also, sentry mode must be enabled each time a driver wants to use the feature by going into controls, safety and security, and selecting sentry mode. The feature has already been rolled out to Model 3 vehicles, then to follow will be Model S and X vehicles that were built after August 2017. Interesting. So Sparky's not going to get this mode. Right. Well, Sparky doesn't have the cameras for this mode. So also as a part of Sentry mode, there was an update to the Tesla dash cam. Oh. Um, so you might remember that the dash cam used to just be out the narrow front facing camera of the car, which meant that, you know, your sides were kind of left wide open. Well, now, according to Tesla, dash cam can now record and store video footage captured by your car's side cameras in addition to the narrow forward camera. As usual, the dash cam icon will be displayed in the status bar with the red dot indicating that the video is recording. Tap the icon to save 10 minute video clips or press and hold to pause recording. So works exactly the same way, except now you're also getting video footage from the two side cameras. So that means if you're side swiped, um, or if uh, you're T-boned, you're probably going to be able to actually access, you know, who did that and then sped off or, or whatever. Or also, like, if someone opens their door into your car, like in a parking lot, or if they vandalize your car. And what I also thought was cool is, um, as you approach the car, so, like, with when you get within two or three feet of the ultrasonic sensors of the car, sentry mode turns on, turning on that, that you know, howl uh, on the screen. Right, and to so, let people know that they're being recorded, probably going to make them think twice if they were you know, going for an opportunistic laptop, you know, smash and grab. Right. Now, Tesla's also rolled out dog mode, which we were conjecturing about last week. I mean, mm -hmm. we couldn't figure out what they were talking about. Now we have actual footage from Tesla showing us what it is. Keep your dog comfortable in your car while letting people passing by know they don't need to worry with dog mode. In addition to keeping the climate control on, the touchscreen will display the current cabin temperature. To enable dog mode, tap the fan icon at the bottom of the touchscreen when your car is parked, set keep climate on to dog, make adjustments within temperature limits, then leave knowing your pet will stay comfortable. Dog mode will stay on after you leave your car. If your battery reaches less than 20% charge, you will receive a notification on your mobile app. Right, so I mean, we weren't exactly sure what dog mode was because they already had over temp protection, which would keep the temperature inside the car below like 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't comfortable for a dog. This no. is a much better feature. Um, I think over temp protection is better for like if you have food in your car or something like this. But well, and plus letting everyone know who walks by the car who's getting concerned that your car is aware that there's a dog inside and that the owner is aware. That's right. huge. I, I mean, why don't other cars have this is yeah, my I question. Mean, there's hundreds, if not thousands of dogs that die in overheated cars every year. Right. I have another idea to upgrade this feature. Oh, yeah? Um, my idea would be to have... Um, dog mode two. This would allow you to um, video chat with your dog while it's in the car. Cause you have the, you have the, uh, you know, passenger facing cameras in the model three at least. Um, so you have a camera looking into the car and you have a screen and your phone has a camera and a screen. And so you have everything you need in order to have uh, a little video chat, a little, uh, you know, FaceTime with your dog in the car. So you can be like, oh, hi, Toto, you know, as you're you're shopping for whatever you're getting. Who's a good dog? Yeah. Who's a good dog? I think the only problem with this, with my idea, is that if you have a very rambunctious dog, it's a great way to get your uh, screen all scratched up. Oh, screen protectors. Screen protector, you're definitely going to want. So lock. does that come with dog mode too? Is uh, the Jesse approved uh, you're screen definitely protector? Gonna, there's going to be a little warning that says, you know, if your dog... I like it. Or or you can just look at your dogs while you're 
you know, to check up on them and oh, make sure that, that they're doing okay. I like that. I'm just, I'm just These saying. These are great ideas. So as thousands of Model 3s are arriving in Europe, I thought it was very interesting that there are 300 car chargers that have been installed in Zebruge, Belgium. They were installed by ICO, International Car Operators, for about $3 million. And soon, they are going to be wind-powered. By the end of the year, there will be a 44 megawatt or 110 gigawatt hour per year power supplied by a local wind farm. Cool, so ICO is already moving 2.1 million cars a year in Zabruge, but it's still expanding. Um, so I think that this is important for vampire drain of electric cars. Uh, if you have an electric car and you leave it for a very long time unplugged, you'll notice that the range goes down over time. Um, and if you're shipping something across the ocean or across multiple oceans, um, and it's going to take a very, very long time to get there, uh, vampire drain be starts to become a very big concern. So to have uh, charging stations right when you get off the ship, I think is a really good idea. And we did hear that uh, when Elon went to visit these ports, he was kind of upset that he saw that it wasn't moving the way he wanted to. And so they're hiring their own Tesla people to take care of prepping the cars when they get off the ships. Right. And so that may have been the story that you hear that Tesla is, uh, you know, stopping contracts with ICO. ICO is still in charge of unloading the cars from the ships. Right. So, you know, they're still involved. They're just not, uh, you know, prepping the cars in terms of doing uh, last minute paint chip repair and stuff like that. Exactly. Everyone is talking about this. This is big news. This is Amazon is investing $700 million in Rivian. Now, we talked a couple weeks ago about Amazon investing in Aurora, which is the self-driving startup tech company. Um, and that was pretty big news. Mm -hmm. um, but that was like $200 million. Now we're talking about $700 million. So let's put this in perspective. Right. Uh, what does $700 million kind of look like to a company like Amazon? So on Amazon's books, as of December 31st, 2018, they had $31.7 billion in cash. So this is the 0.7. At the end of that number, it's the $0.7 billion. It is oh. $0.7 billion that they are using to invest so, into Rivian. So maybe Jeff just wanted to round out the books a little bit and you know clean things up. Right. He's like, $31 billion <laughs> is so much better than the 31.7. I, I mean, yeah, I, I think that uh, maybe he just really wanted a Rivian truck and he knew this is the best way to get one. Oh, you think he thought it cost $700 million? I don't know. If you're Jeff Bezos, if you're the richest man in the world, how do you buy a truck? You don't go to the store. I think you... You, you, in, you heavily invest in the company that makes that kind of truck, and you just hope that they give you one. I thought that uh, he would just use Alexa to buy it. He'd be like, Alexa, how many Rivian R1Ts can I get for $700 million? I'm not sure I can help you with that. Yeah. I mean... Uh, you know, Alexa's not as good as Google Home. I'm going to say that right now. And to put this in perspective, also, Rivian has raised a total of about $1.5 billion now, including the Amazon investment. So that's about half of their investment. Right. And, and let's kind of give you what our sense is about why Amazon might have done this. Right. Um, I believe it's because Amazon wanted to get, first of all, some people on the board. Uh, when you invest $700 million, you get mm -hmm. some board members, which yep. means you now get to see what's going on in the company. And it allows you to see when you should maybe buy the company outright because you'll be one of the first people to know its true value and when's the right time to buy it and so forth. It's a good point. I think also it made a lot of sense for Rivian. You're getting a lot of expertise onto your board um, that you wouldn't have otherwise. I think that also Amazon is able to actually use this as an investment point. They're like, this company we know is going to be big. We're going to make a ton of money if we ever decide to uh, sell our stake in it. And I mean, I think overall, this is just a super positive story. I don't think that there's really any bad things to, to say. So, I mean, this is one of the few electric car companies outside of Tesla that Jesse and I have been truly excited about um, because they truly get it. They're mm. doing this the right way and they're coming out with very exciting cars like the R1T, which is a luxury pickup truck. That'll be out sometime in 2020. And then the R1S, which will be out in 2021. And that is a luxury SUV. Fantastic specs. Um, we've put down deposits on both of them because we want to bring both of those to our channel to show you guys. So we're super excited about them. I think that Amazon also sees as a possibility that A, this could be a big um, electric car company going forward, but Amazon is in the business of needing trucks to uh, ship their products. Right. I don't know if you've gotten an Amazon package recently, but it may have been delivered by not the mail. It may right. have just been some guy in a Corolla pulled up to your door, 
put a package on your on your doorstep and took a picture of it and then drove off. And you may have been like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, and keep in mind that the Rivians are going to be level three, level four autonomous vehicles when they come out. Um, if if Amazon can get into autonomous vehicles for delivering their products, right. that's a huge space to be in. Because, I mean, keep in mind, they just invested in Aurora. So now you have, uh, you know, board members on Aurora, board members in Rivian. Maybe that's a partnership that they look to exactly. make in, in the future. There's a lot of exciting things, especially for Amazon, especially for delivery, that could happen. So, I mean, there's m a lot of different reasons why Amazon can do this. We don't know exactly the reasons why they did this. This is all conjecture. But we do know $700 million in Rivian. That's fantastic. This week, there are more and more of these school strike for climate protests going on around the world, mainly from young people who are taking days off from school to protest that the earth needs attention and that their schools aren't teaching them about it. I'm just so glad that so many people are, are coming out for this. But do you realize how little you're seeing of this in mm. the mass media? Like you really have to go to social medias to actually see footage, which is usually just shot by someone who is at the event. Right. When you go to the mass media, they either underreport it or they do this very snarky reporting about, oh, these little, you know, kids they just want to get off school yeah that's, that's the it. only that's, that's the, only, the reason. only reason they're doing right. it is they don't like school so of course they're not gonna go i i mean i am sad that i'm not going to school anymore because i would have liked to have been in a part of these protests well i, I mean, can't i can't like be like i'm taking days <laughs> off work yeah take that work like it's not I can't do that. It's hard to do. Most people can't do that. Right. Most people can't be like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be protesting. Sorry. I'm not going to be, I can't come to work. But I, mean, I just want to point out how mm. important this is because, you know, in 50 years when horrible things are happening to this planet, I will have retired from the planet. Whereas these kids will still be on the planet. They may be retiring from their jobs, but they're still going to be around for a lot longer. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're taking this so seriously. Right. When we adults hear about things that are going to happen years and years from now, we just shut off. And we're just like, well, it's not going to affect me. Right. It's going to affect them, though. Right. And I mean, what is the point of making the kids go to school if their lives are going to be ruined by the time they actually need to apply any of these skills? I right. mean... Really, it, it's uh, you get into this routine where it's just like, well, you should go to school because I went to school. Right. It's like, okay, but like, think about it a, a few more steps ahead. Right. And if you went to school and you didn't learn to do anything about the planet, why should I go to that same school system? Right. So you know that we are huge SpaceX fans on this channel, but I guess I hadn't realized how amazing the Raptor engine is. I just thought it was just a cool engine. This week, Jesse sent me this article, I got into it, and I was like, I didn't realize this was like the holy grail of, of rocketry. Of rocketry. Right, I Can didn't Can you explain either. this from a high level? Yeah, so let's, let's kind of go through this. So I kind of just went through my whole life just being like, oh, rocket engines, you know, I played Kerbal Space Program. Oh, there's different kinds and they do different things or whatever. Um, what I didn't realize is that this engine, the Raptor, is a full flow rocket engine. All right, what's, a, what's that mean? So basically, the way that rocket engines have worked for quite a long time is that you would have sort of a separate little turbine that you used and you'd burn fuel uh, with a different mixture in order to get it uh, to burn cool enough. And then you'd kind of have this little turbine on the side of your rocket, which would be burning propellant to spin up the stuff to pump your propellants through your main rocket nozzle. Okay. So it's almost like having a rocket engine to power your rocket engine. In the past, that turbine would have to get rid of its unburnt fuel like out the side of the rocket. That's kind of the brown, that black smoke you'd see on the side of the rocket. Right. And so that's actually propellant that you're throwing away. That isn't necessarily... So it's not fully burnt. Right. You're not getting all of the energy out of it that you could. Right? And it's not going into the main rocket engine. So the reason they couldn't reburn it, I guess, was because it got so hot, they didn't have the metallurgy available to figure out how to keep the, melt the rocket from actually melting. The Soviets were actually testing a rocket that could do this. Back in the 1967, they had the RD-270, but they stopped working on it after we got to the moon in 1969 because they were like, oh... They got to the moon. I guess they're better than us. Right. So basically, this Raptor en engine is like what rocket scientists have been waiting for f since the beginning of rocketry. Okay, but what I want to point out is that, yeah, we've been trying to do this for decades, mm -hmm. and all everyone basically said you can't do it. The metallurgy is too difficult. It's too complicated. Elon came along and said, well, I think we can do it, and then did it. basically did it. That's fantastic. That's, it's, it's so exciting. I mean... 
how exciting is that to have someone who is just like, well, we'll, we'll figure it out. This thing that everyone was saying, oh, you can't do it. It's impossible. I mean, it brings you back to the, uh, to, you know, way back in time when before powered flight. And it was just like, the only thing that can fly are balloons, you know, and nothing else can fly besides birds. And someone and the Wright brothers were like, we're going to make a flying thing. And people were like, you're crazy. Only the birds and balloons can fly. And so that you know, it's the same sort of concept of people saying, you can't do that, that's impossible. And then to be like, well, with some engineering effort and some, you know, a whole lot of money in research and development, anything is possible. And they proved it. And here's the thing, when since they hopefully have pulled it off, the turbines are going to run cooler under lower pressure, so they'll last longer and need less maintenance. Which is something that you want if you want a rocket that you can get a lot of miles out of. Right. Because a lot of rockets up until this point you would launch them once, and then they would burn up in the atmosphere. Yeah. So this is actually a time where you want an engine to last longer. I, I mean, mean, this is the holy grail of rocketry, and we should be actually making hops with it. Mm -hmm. That means test flights near Brownsville, Texas, this year. So the Tennessee Valley Authority said last week that they will be closing the Kentucky Paradise Number no. 3 coal plant in 2020 and Tennessee's Bull Run plant in 2023. That's exciting. That is super awesome. The chief executive of the Tennessee Valley Authority, William D. Johnson, said it is not about coal. This decision is about economics. It's about keeping rates as low as feasible. The board voted it would be too costly to sustain the 49-year-old plant. It was only operated intermittently last year anyway because it was no longer needed to supply uninterrupted power known as baseload. But that didn't stop Robert E. Murray from saying that he was extremely disappointed in the TVA's decision. Who's Robert Murray? Well, he owns Murray Energy, a coal mining company uh, that delivered 100,000 tons of coal a year to the Paradise Coal Plant. So, of course, he's upset by this. Yes. And do you know who else didn't want the closings to happen? Uh, no. Donald Trump. He uh, tweeted last week, Coal is an important part of our electricity generation mix, and TVA should give serious consideration to all factors before voting to close viable power plants like Paradise Number no. 3 in Kentucky. Let's give a little more background here. Mm -hmm. John M. Thomas III, TVA's CFO, said that closing the two plants would save ratepayers $320 million without affecting the reliability and resilience of the agency's fleet. Both plants would have required about $1.3 billion in capital investments to keep them open. So then why would Trump tweet this out? If there were other factors to consider, I mean, what were the other factors? Uh, I know 100,000 factors. Wow, that's a lot. What, what are they? So Murray Energy Corporation's PAC, their political action committee, gave $100,000 to the Trump Victory Super PAC. Oh, so this is just crony capitalism at its finest here. You have uh, a corporation that wants to buy out the government, essentially, and tell them what to do. So they spend $100,000 and then expect that politician to support whatever their interests are. Yeah, I mean, the Tennessee Valley uh, Authority is a federal uh, corporation that is, a, those people on the authority are appointed by the president. So by the president tweeting out what he wanted, he was basically telling those board members how he wanted them to vote. Now, luckily, they didn't vote the way he wanted them mm -hmm. to vote. They voted six to one to close, but that's what you get for $100,000. So, I mean, Trump promised during his campaign that he wanted to drain the swamp. And I think that if you voted for Trump, that is that is an admirable thing to want, to, to drain the Washington swamp, to get rid of all of this, uh, you know, money in politics, this corruption, this like sort of deep state kind of everyone's all yeah, you in bed with my each back, other I kind of yours. thing. Right. Yeah. But that's not what happened. This no. is not this isn't what you voted for if you voted for Trump. I, I mean, that's that's really disappointing. If you went into the previous election thinking, I'm going to drain the swamp, unfortunately, that vote didn't do that. Right. It's not the representative government that was laid out in the Constitution. It's more like a mob boss. Right. It's like, hey, you come to me. Yeah, you're going to give me some money, and then we're going to make everything all right for you. Oh, Mr. Murray, Mr. Murray, he gave me a lot of money. He wants to make sure that that plant stays open. Otherwise, so we can't, uh, can't make any sort of deal. You're going to make a good mob boss someday. <laughs> I am wow. Italian. That, that's, that's pretty why good. it's okay this, for me to do that. If this YouTube thing doesn't work <laughs> out, absolutely. we're all set. So have you heard recently how hot it is in Australia? It can't be that hot. It's winter. Uh, 
it's their summer. But anyway, it was getting up to like 45 degrees. That's like barely above freezing. What are you talking about? Celsius. 45 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's like 62 degrees Fahrenheit. No, 113 degrees. What? Yeah. It's super hot. Wow. They are having some of the, the record hottest winter. You know, it's their summer ever. Wow. And that means that people are really relying on their air conditioning. And yeah, I mean, there's usually brownouts when, when you get that much, that many people relying on air conditioning. Not just brownouts, blackouts in Australia. So wait, people you, are losing power. So what do you do to keep cool when you lose your power? Well, Carl Prynne told the Sydney Morning Herald, I didn't initially realize that the power had gone out. Wait, what? He then said, but then I got a text notification from the app to say that I was now on backup mode. What app? Uh, the Tesla app, because he has a Tesla Powerwall. Oh, so his power stayed on. His power stayed on. Unfortunately, everyone else in his neighborhood did not have power. Wow. Now, I kept reading in this article, it said that his power bills also went from $4,000 a year down to $600 a year because he combined a solar system and a Tesla Powerwall. Yeah, that's insane. Australia has some of the highest rates of solar systems. Uh, almost 200,000 residential solar systems have been installed and about 20,000 of them have home battery pack installations. That's awesome. That is super awesome. And you can see why you'd need it if you're going to bake in your house if you don't have it. So I was surprised to see that um, people in Australia who have solar on the roof and a battery pack still get their solar generation shut off during a power failure um, because I guess they need to protect people who are working on the grid. And that got me thinking, it's like, they're still making power. Right. Why don't we come up with a uh, smart switch that basically isolates their house from the grid, keeps their power generation going, powering their battery, powering their house while the grid is off so that they can keep making power. Right, it's like that almost everywhere. It seems like, it seems like we need someone like Tesla to come up with this switch, get it approved by whatever organizations that they have to. I mean, I think that there's a there's a reason why uh, they don't want people to be able to disconnect from the grid. Right, because I think you would see like, oh, the grid's not doing that much for me right now. Oh, I could just do this all year and not have to pay the grid anything. Right. Uh, and I mean, that kind of gets into, again, how much money there is in politics because all of these grids, <laughs> I say all of them, there's like a handful throughout the world, right. have a monopoly on being a grid in that area and they can influence lawmakers to say, you have to pay us, you have to be connected to the grid. Right. In Massachusetts, you can't be off grid. Right. We've talked about this before, but I think it bears repeating. You can't be off grid in Massachusetts, even if you can feasibly, physically do it right. because it's a form of tax evasion. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, I know. Absolutely because, wild. Because there are states where you can. Our neighboring states allow you to do it. All right, it's time for the lightning round. Here we go. Check this out, Jesse. What does it look like to you? There's a, there's a plague hitting Europe. Oh, my God. The bubonic plague has hit again. Uh, oh, no. No, no it, it, it's, 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 it's good news. This is the conversions of the Tesla supercharger network to CCS so that Model 3s can use it. Oh, okay. When I looked at this uh, list last week, mm -hmm. it was about 48% had been converted. Now we're about 60%. It's only a week later. Wow. So they're really flying. Yeah. That's crazy. And it's all to get ready for the Model 3s that are already being delivered. Yeah. This is East Track. It's a hover car. Yeah, it's, uh, well, no. Uh, see see that little uh, yellow oh, thing that's moving the okay. car around? I thought the car was just hovering. No, that would the... be that would be cool. Yeah. Right? Um, but that's next. Okay. That's next update. No, so this is uh, East Track's uh, car mover. And you can see there's a guy with the remote control mm -hmm. um, who's able to pick up an entire 6,000 pound Model X, move it off the truck, drive it around, put it back on the truck, whatever you need to do in a tight space. This is a great way to move cars around. It's an awesome way. The Holy only smokes. thing I would like them to do is change it from a noisy, uh, gas, smelly engine to electric powered. If it was battery and electric powered, you'd have a perfectly silent, clean way to move electric cars around, yeah, which I think would be awesome. So You could just, tow people's cars without them even knowing it. <laughs> exactly. Or you could move them on and off trucks very safely. So I think that uh, Elon and company should talk to East Track and uh, see about changing out the power structure. Uh, like I always say, Elon has way too much on his plate. That's true. We need Elon too. The Model 3 received the 2019 Kelly Blue Book Best Autotech Award for Best Luxury Brand. Wow. 
So, I mean, when we say that the Model 3 is this awesome car, you don't have to take our word for it. Yeah, take a listen to the Kelly Blue Book. Their editorial team said they drove the 2019 Tesla Model 3, and all of us were impressed with how effortless it was to operate. A solid confirmation of why it earned our best auto tech award. Ten-year-old Orlin in Bruges, he suffers from leukemia and has about six months to live. The director of his school, Nancy Crea, said he has not been able to go to school this year. He spent a lot of time in the hospital. One of the things on Orlin's wish list was to go for a ride in a Tesla, and his director was able to make that happen, picking him up in a red Model S and driving him to a school where he was VIP for the day. That's really sweet. We've been asking people around the world for a long time now to try and get your school districts or your local school to put solar panels on the roof. And we know that a lot of schools don't want to do this until they hear that other schools have done it, right? Well, here's a school district that's done it. Our friend Dan let us know about this. Thousands of solar panels have been installed at 10 campuses in the San Bernardino City Unified School District. Wow, that's a really long thing. I think it's easier to say... Skibuzked. <laughs> the project began in July of 2018 and was completed in December. The district is projected to save up to $20 million over the next 20 years. And get this. What? They didn't have to spend a penny. <sighs> no, you can't save money. You got to spend money to make money. You got to make spend to... M- money uh well pfmg solar llc they spent the money Mm -hmm. um and so they did this under a power purchase agreement the company spends the money to put the solar panels on the roof of the school the school then gets to pay a lower a utility cost saving them money and paying back the cost to the the uh, solar company that put them on the roof wow many districts can do this so that's a huge win for the school yeah and the school district superintendent dr dale marsden said this project will allow us to reduce energy costs and also reduce our carbon footprint that's a win-win for our district and our community absolutely i mean saving a million dollars a year basically yeah So we all heard this week that Mars Opportunity Rover, its mission ended. Um, It landed on Mars 34 million miles away on January 25th, 2004, and it was only intended to last for three months. It has now lasted for almost 15 years. It drove 28 miles, which is 45 kilometers. That's the farthest distance achieved by any extraplanetary robot. It found the first meteorite found on another planet. It got stuck in dunes and then freed itself. Um, It took a selfie and it studied 100 impact craters. And I want to point this out. It did all of this on a planet further away from the sun using solar panels. Yep. The entire 15-year mission was powered by the sun. I know. I can't wait to visit the museum where they actually have the real one on Mars. I hope that they take the whole trip... You know, the whole 28 miles, I hope, is just this, like... Meandering course of... (laughs) Yeah, I hope it's, like, an enclosed bubble where Mm -hmm. they keep it all intact, the whole thing, Mm -hmm. right? And you have, like, you know, a walking path that goes along the whole thing with, like, you know, holograms that are telling you about it. I love it. That's what I want. You should be the curator. I want to be the... Yeah. Elon, (laughs) when you get to Mars and you're building your city, I'll be the curator for the Opportunity Museum. All right. So the 2020 Kia Soul EV just joined the 200 Mile Plus Club. Woohoo! It's got an EPA range of 243 miles, which is 391 kilometers. It's got a 64 kilowatt hour battery. My biggest question, though, is where are these cars? I don't get to talk about them much because I have not seen a single one of them. Yeah, these cars are very rare in the United States. Um, I think that they are being sold in Europe and also Korea, which makes sense. That's where they're made. But I really want them to come to the United States. There's absolutely no reason why they wouldn't sell here. So Sweden's Prime Minister, Stefan Löfven, announced that no new internal combustion engine cars will be sold in Sweden after 2030. So Sweden has joined 10 countries that have set exit dates for ICE cars. Yeah, check out this list here. These are some not too small countries. We got China, we got France, India. All of these countries are planning on getting rid of internal combustion engine cars in the foreseeable future. Yeah, USA, let's get on that list. Absolutely. Another Easter egg was found in the uh, Tesla. Awesome. This one, very specific. (laughs) If you haven't seen Back to the Future... Pause the video, (laughs) go watch Back to the Future, and then come back, and this will all make sense. Otherwise, this won't make a lick of sense at all. So here's what it is. If you have a Tesla, Mm -hmm. and you get it down to 121 miles, um, you tap the battery icon on your app, and then all of a sudden, the 121 miles turns to 1.21 gigawatts. I know that is incorrect, but if you saw the movie, 
you would know that that's how they say it in the movie. Do you think he said that in the movie? Because by that point in 1980s, they didn't even think gigawatts was going to be a thing. Um, they just liked his delivery, I uh, believe is what it was. Okay. They liked gigawatts. It sounds way funnier it does than gigawatts. Funny. Yeah. All right, so there's been some spottings of the Porsche Taycan prototype. Mm -hmm. um, this video here shows the charge port door opening as the prototype charged in Italy. Now, this, I have to say, I like. I like this charge port opening. That's wicked cool. Yeah. Everything should be as cool as possible. That's my motto. Everything should be as cool as possible. This is one thing that is very cool. Also, the Taycan has a frunk. Congratulations. Welcome to the frunk club. <laughs> yeah. It's so nice. There aren't too many electric cars that have frunks besides Tesla's. Yeah. And now Porsche Taycans. Nice. It's time for the video contributor story. Now, I want to do a call out to anyone who wants to do a video contributor story for us. Uh, remember that you can contact us and pitch us an idea mm -hmm. and then... Uh, You'll be on the show. What do we got this week, Jess? We have Christian from Germany. He was checking out some electric buses. Hey, this is Chris from uh, Hamburg, Germany, today in Frankfurt, to see the first ever long-distance electric bus going from Frankfurt to Mannheim. Take a small trip on it from Frankfurt to Frankfurt Airport just to see how it rides and uh, report for the feeling for you and give you more details while we're on the bus. Hey, I'm back. Uh, so we are standing in front of the bus now and uh, I tried to convince the driver to give some words on how the bus drives. Um, we'll be in German though. I'll translate it for you in the sub as a subtitle. Hi. Um, so das ist der Fahrer von dem Bus, der einzige Elektrobus, äh, Fernbus in Deutschland soweit. Und äh, kannst du kurz sagen, wie sich der fährt, ob der besser ist als die Benzinbusse oder bist du vorher oder diese Bus, bist du vorher diese Bus gefahren? Ja, hauptsächlich. Hauptsächlich, ja. Herzlich ruhiger halt. Ruhiger. Ja, ist ja Höchstgeschwindigkeit gleich oder? Höchstgeschwindigkeit ist gleich. Ist auf 90 km h in die zugelassen. Okay. Und äh, fährt aber könnte auch 100 oder könnte auch 100, okay. Ja. After the bus ride, I had a talk with the bus driver. Here's a short recap of what he said. The noise difference on low speeds is noticeable, but on higher speeds the tire noise still reaches very high levels. The technology is not yet ready for long distance rides, but he is interested in what the future might bring. It is quite a difference to drive this particular bus compared to other buses, but mainly because it's a Chinese make, not because of the electric motor. They also weren't lucky with the bus as it had a lot of downtime due to technical problems. But it seems that they sorted out the technical problems and are ready to go for the future. Thank you, Christian. I wow. really love at the end of the video where he shows the difference, the difference in sound. Because if you go back and play it, you'll notice it. that was just with the phone, which mm -hmm. actually tries to lower the volume when something's loud. Right. But it's compressing everything to try and get it. But the electric bus was absolutely right. silent. You, you could, could, hear, you could like, hear like the brakes or something. Right. I, people walking and yeah. having conversations. Imagine, just imagine for a minute, if you've ever been somewhere with loud buses, just imagine if they were just dead silent. Yeah. What your, how you, your life would be different. Suddenly yeah. you're not like, um, okay, I'll be there in like half an hour, half an hour. Ha hello? 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 All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. Uh, for those of you who'd like to support this channel, head on over to Patreon for as little as a buck a month. You can watch all of our bonus stories and our Model 3 tip of the week before everyone else. <laughs> Hey everybody, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories and it's time for our Patreon shout outs. Who do we got this week, Jesse? We have Jason Amerson, Para Johansson, Jill L. Morris, Dave and Sarah Woods, Thomas Worrell, Patrick Pogge, Christian Moore, Marcus Crogdale, Patrick Horty, Lars Kallstrom, Richard Bogman, Quinson Gonjan, Elon Malord, Bernard Simon. And Philip Stadelman. Thank you guys for being our Patreons. We really appreciate it. And you guys are going to get onto the end credits at the end of the show. 
All right, it's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. All right, what do we have? Well, so uh, this was tweeted out at Elon. This claim that the BMW i3, the Audi e-tron, and the Cadillac ELR will soon, in two to three years, seriously compete with Tesla's Model S in the electric luxury car market. Oh my gosh. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about the, I mean, the e-tron, yes, but I mean, the i3, I wasn't considering. What's the ELR? When, when was this? Hang on. What What is this? Uh, this was tweeted out on the 20th of November, 2013. Wait, wait, wait. This was six years ago? The caption here from the Wall Street Journal is that Tesla is about to get some deep-pocketed company in the market for luxury brand plug-in and electric cars. That is from Wall Street Journal's Global Autos editor, Joe White. And he has the details. He has the details, which turn out to be wrong, <laughs> Joe. If I can just see here, Etron is not come out not yet in like uh, any appreciable amount no i3 still has a range that is sub 200 and and what is the cadillac elr doesn't exist um and elon tweeted out wow 2013 (laughs) now was he sounding like owen wilson when he said it i think wow wow someone tweeted to elon they said testing a tesla model 3 tonight the biggest issue i found is that going from a multi-lane on-ramp with more than one feed to a multi-lane highway makes for some scary situations ap doesn't look far enough ahead to see the need for multiple lane merges in time i noticed this on my trip down to washington dc yeah sometimes you need to be in like the right lane but not the most right lane you got to be like in the third right lane but not the left lane it's just like it's very stressful. It's hard to know exactly where to be in. And Drive on Nav doesn't necessarily always know exactly what lane to do. It just knows, like, you need to be in the right lanes to exit the highway. Well, guess what Elon tweeted? What? It will soon. Sweet. Yeah. I mean, how cool that you buy a car mm-hmm. and it gets better over time. Yep. All right, it's time for community mail time. Community mail time. So our friend Jasper uh, just did this cool one-hour lecture at FOSDEM where he talks about uh, Tesla hacking and the Freedom EV project. So go check that out if you're into that kind of thing. Also, our friend Jamin got his new Model S. He used our referral code, so we'll be meeting him in the Roadster. That's going to be fun. Congratulations. And a big thank you to our buddy Rob. Check out this video he sent us. Hey, everyone. Tony here. And today I'm going to make a case for why driving, well stinks. Ten years ago, after watching Al Gore inform us of our pending doom, I have to say I felt more than a little guilty about my own contributions to this climate change mess. Driving around every day weighed on me. That inescapable guilt of producing CO2 and greenhouse gases. But how much greenhouse gas was I really producing? So let's start our little journey by considering a liter of gasoline. This weighs a bit under one kilogram, and I can drive about eight kilometers on it. Nothing fancy yet, but when you burn it, it turns into two and a half kilograms of CO2. Well, that's right, partner. You're adding a couple of oxygens to that carbon to make CO2. I mean, I'm driving my eight kilometers down the road, burning my kilogram of gasoline, and I'm leaving this behind, right? Uh Uh-uh. Two and a half kilograms of CO2 looks like this. It's about one and a half cubic meters. Let's take it a step further. One tank of gas of 50 liters, it produces this much CO2. And if that's not startling enough, let's look at what happens when you drive 25,000 kilometers a year. I don't even have enough Lego to make the block. And I get it that our atmosphere is higher than where we're flying around in airplanes, but I don't think our atmosphere is really all that big. When I look out my airplane window, There's not that much space down there. This is an airplane at 80,000 feet. And they're wearing spacesuits. And they're looking at stars. And that airplane we were on? It's above that orange and red stuff. Our atmosphere is not a limitless dumping ground. There was no escaping it. I was aware of my complicity. But don't despair. Pay attention more to our scientists and not our politicians. Because, well, now you know. That is some pretty darn good stop motion animation. Yeah. I mean, I did some and good ex- explanation too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, well researched and well shot. I mean, you might think, oh, it's just like a three minute video. No, no. That was stop motion. You do not understand how much time and effort went into it. Every single scene, every single shot was like a really long time yeah. i can relate i have made a very crappy stop motion video when i was younger boy was that a 
<laughs> yeah. a humdinger of a project. So go check out his channel and share that video with people. It's a really good explanation. Mm -hmm. All right. So for our Patreon polls of the week, we did a couple polls. One of them was, do you think Tesla's purchase of Maxwell Technologies will be a positive for Tesla in the long run? And so 93% of Patreons said, yes, that this was a great idea. Uh, 7%, hmm, I have no idea. And 0% said, no, I think this was not a wise strategy. Now, that's 306 people. That's a pretty big <laughs> that's sample a pretty size. pretty big sample size. They might be a little biased. They do support the show. So <laughs> That's kind of amazing. It, it, no, I mean, that is amazing to have a, a practically unanimous decision um, about anything yeah. between 300 and six people then we also put out this poll about tesla sightings in europe we asked just our european viewers to uh put down how many teslas they see in an average week and by far the number one answer was one to two right. the reason we did this poll was to, so we can come back in a few weeks or months and see how the model 3 is doing and if it's made any kind of impact on what people see right. every day you will notice that there are people who see more than 41 a day <laughs> Uh, those people live in Norway, <laughs> which is, uh, if you haven't heard of it, is in the future. <laughs> All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews. Now, remember that you guys can go out there, too. Anyone can go out there with a camera and shoot destination chargers, superchargers. Please just shoot it in landscape. Tell us about the amenities and give it a rank from 1 to 10. All right, let's see what it looks like. Hello, Zach and Jesse. This is Michael out here in Leavenworth, Kansas, just north of Kansas City and just south of historic Fort Leavenworth, uh, Leavenworth, Kansas is the first city in Kansas, dating way back into the late 1800s. This is a new destination charger, just came online here about a month ago, at a new Home 2 Suites. So it's uh, the third, be the, there's two destination chargers here for Tesla, and two destination chargers for or regular level 2 chargers. So this gives us a total of three Tesla destination chargers within downtown Leavenworth itself. Which is really nice because the nearest supercharger is on the complete opposite side of the Kansas City, Missouri side. So just wanted to give you guys a destination charge review here from Leavenworth, Kansas. Hello, Zach and Jesse. This is Ben here in Beaver, Utah at the supercharger station. There are four superchargers here. There's also uh, a hotel and a Dairy Queen along with the Timberline restaurant. We've got a Quality Inn, and then across the freeway, there's the Comfort Inn and Suites over there. This supercharger is at 5,900 feet, or 1,800 meters, so make sure you plan accordingly, because you will lose significant range driving up here, but you'll gain most of it back on the way back down. Okay, thanks so much for all you guys do. Hi. Sac and Jesse, this is Gerardo calling from Northwest Spain in the Pilgrim's Way to Finisterre. That is Latin for end of the earth. We have here an eight stall. Very nice place, good food, plenty of space, even we have an old gas station over there. We have here not range anxiety but uh, waiting anxiety. We would like to put our hands in our Model 3, finally, in Europe. Thank you, thank you very much for your good work. Bye. Hey, Zach and Jesse, I'm here in the Bristol, Tennessee Supercharger. It's an eight stall charger. Uh, it's in a kind of like a shopping complex parking lot, really easy to find right off the interstate. Uh, there's a ton of stuff right here. There's a, a Chick-fil-A just right across the parking lot. Uh, there's a McDonald's, a Zaxby's, uh, a Steak and Shake, tons of places to choose from to eat. Um, and then there's also shopping all around. Um, Dick's Sporting Good is one of the closest spots here that you could spend some time, but 
Um, this is a really good supercharger, a ton of stuff to do here. I would, I would probably give this a 10 out of 10. And now you know. Some pretty good examples of what a supercharger review should look like. Keep in mind, you can also do destination chargers. New superchargers in the world oh, this week. We have- Get ready. So many. So many. Right. So many. Here we go. Take it away. All right. Number 11 in Taiwan is the eight stall at the Tai Chung at the J Mall in Taiwan. The eight stall in Roscoe, New York. The 10 stall in Corte Madera, California. The six stall in Shanglu International Conference Center, China. Number 251 in China is the six stall Lin Yi Pullman in China. The 10 stall in Columbus, Ohio. The 10 stall in Riverview, Florida. The 14 stall in Bruxelles, Germany. The eight stall in Kearney, New Jersey. The 12 stall at National Harbor, Potomac Passage, Maryland. The eight stall in Scottsdale at the North Kierland Boulevard in Arizona. The eight stall in Wyarn, Germany. Number 617 in the US, the six stall in Altoona, Iowa. Number 435 in Europe, number 1464 in the world is the 12 stall at Stormann, Sweden. All right, for Be Free this week, which is businesses for rewarding Elon employees, we have our buddies Peter and Will Anderson in New York, and they said, if you're visiting New York City, get to know jazz celebrities and Juilliard-trained jazz performers, twin brothers Peter and Will Anderson. They will give you a free 45-minute jazz private lesson on piano, saxophone, clarinet, or flute, and also get free tickets to one of their shows. Wait, wait. Th Are you kidding me? There's no... You don't have to bring any money. What? I think you just have to bring your, your Tesla or SpaceX or Boring Company ID to prove that you work for, for Elon. Do you realize what this is worth? I want to learn saxophone just for this. I, I, I know. I want to go 40, get a job with Elon so I can get a lesson. <laughs> a 45 minute jazz lesson. Are you kidding Private me? Private lesson? With, with some of the best That's musicians like, in the world? I don't even want to know how much that would normally cost. That's crazy. And then free tickets to one of their shows. That's really, really nice. What? This is awesome. That's what I'm talking about. I love Be Free. Absolutely. I love our community. This is awesome. All right. It's time for our Patreon giveaway. It's the Patreon giveaway. All right. We're giving away a poster this week. This is from PosterEnvy.com, the uh, company that Jesse and I own. And this is Starship Voyage to Mars, designed by our own amazing Bobby. Yeah. I don't Check know if the camera's out. picking it up no. properly. Uh, Brent, Bobby, why don't you put like a better... Yeah, put it from like, like a Poster crisp, Envy. crisp image on the screen there while we find our winner here. All right. So to get in this big tub of fun, you have to be a Patreon. And for every buck you give, you get a card in there. And Jesse's going to pull out a winner. Thank I'm going to sign the poster. And the winner is Gail... Poserate. You probably pronounced it wrong, but I we'll find you. I probably did a terrible job <laughs> pronouncing it, uh, so we're going to print it on screen. If that is you, please get in contact with us, and we're going to ship you this poster that I'm signing right now. I'm going to put your name back in so you can win again. All right, so you made it to the end of the show. You did it. Pat yourself on the back. Congratulations. We always pat ourselves on the uh, back when we make it to the end of a show. I want to talk about Discord, Jesse. Absolutely. Because I think that it's one of the cooler things that our Patreons get to do, it's a perk that we offer to our Patreons, mm -hmm. but it's one of the most misunderstood things. It, I didn't understand it right. until recently. Basically, everyone on Discord is a $3 or above Patreon supporter of the show. Kind of a side effect of this is that everyone there is awesome. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, like uh, I've been on uh, different um, you know, communi online communities and stuff like that, and you typically have um, some, let's just say, not so nice people. Mm -hmm. This is not the case on our on our Discord. Everyone there is really polite, really respectful. I mean, everyone has to be, but we, we've made right. guidelines to make sure that that is the case. So if anything ever occurs, we can deal with it. But um, we haven't had any issues, which has kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, but yeah, everyone on there is so super awesome super intelligent we have some people um who are making electric skateboards from, from like from scratch yeah from like batteries and and components we're all trying to work together to to figure out things whether we're just learning about what's going on in the world today whether it's you know policies that can help fight climate change or you know all sorts of different things um we have it all organized into different channels so each 
uh, like the Model S has its own channel. So if you want to talk about a certain aspect of the Model S, you can enter that channel, talk all about it. Model 3 has its own channel. Um, we have channels for other electric cars. We have channels for uh, just sort of climate change in general. We have uh, channels for talking about the show. We have channels for uh, just sort of random things that you might find on the internet. I guess what I kind of really think is special about it is if you think about maybe something similar to it, like um, the Tesla forums, mm -hmm. right? Which is a cool place to go to. The nice thing here is, um, You've, you've gotten one more level of niceness, I think, built into it because um, the Tesla forums, you know, anyone basically can be on there. Right. And it's generally great. But here you've got people who also care one more level, one more step about sustainability. Right. And so I feel like that's even a, even a better community. Right. And, I mean, everyone is paying to be there. And, and everyone, you know, watches the show enough to support us for $3 more a month. So... Um, you all have at least something in common. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's one of the reasons we did this is we wanted to add an extra layer of value to our Patreon perks. Right. And so this is a way for us to do that and get even more connected with you in the community. Right. And so, I mean, I mentioned at the top of the show, um, we can actually start using the voice part of this. And we're going to be telling you next week about a cool new feature that we're going to do on Discord. So that's kind of an incentive this week. If you're thinking about Discord, or maybe you've already paying it $3 or above, right. a get lot onto of it. people. I mean, I want to be talking to you specifically. If you're waiting for your name, that means that you can get on the Discord. Um, so if you're, if any, everyone's name that you're seeing here could be on the Discord, but not everyone has joined. If anyone has any trouble joining whatsoever, Please uh, reach out on Patreon. You can message us on Patreon. You can message us on Facebook if you're not a Patreon yet. Um, but please do whatever you got to do. It's pretty easy. It's I mean, we've got the directions right there. And everyone so far without, you know, I mean, maybe one or two cases have right. been a little. So basically, you just need to create a Discord account, which will be your, you know, name in the Discord. Um, and then you need to connect it to your Patreon account, which you go into the account settings in Patreon. Um, you should be able to link to a couple different uh, services. Discord is one of them, and that will automatically add you to our server. Um, and then you can we can chat on there. And it's really cool. Right. It's really awesome. And yeah, so for everyone who's already like paying for it, this we wanted to add this basically to. And to add more value to what you're already doing to support our show. And if you're thinking about Discord and you're a little bit like, oh, I'm afraid, the cool thing is you can get on there and just read. Right. You don't have to chat first. You can kind of just get used to it and be like, oh, this is what it's all about. You, Absolutely. So, and it, it's really cool. There's so many cool conversations. And like I said, next week we're going to be adding a new level of fun to it. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. No one's going to you know, come up to you and be like, hello? Hi, how are you today? Hello, right. I would it's, like to communicate with you. It's, it's kind of like, it's like the Tesla forum. Um, you know, it's, you get to basically. Right. It's, it's laid out a little bit differently, but um, we're able to kind of talk about the same sort of things in just a different uh, a different way. I think it's a bit more of a friendly community. Yeah, no, it's a great way like to ask a question or, or answer a question right. or to just strike up a conversation. And I mean, two people right now, if they wanted to, could have a private chat, a voice chat using um, Discord. So like if Jesse and I were on there and like, hey, blah, 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 solar. Oh, blah, blah, solar. Hey, you're really cool. Let's right. meet up. Well, what's your, let's, let's voice chat. And then we could talk to each other and be like, okay, this guy isn't crazy or he is crazy in just the right way. I'm going to send him my details and we'll, you know, meet up and build a, a, a you know, I, I want people to start, you know, converting cars and stuff right. like that, you know? I know there's tremendous people have skills. There's tremendous opportunities, mm. and these are probably some of the most amazing people on earth. And so, yeah, you guys should be talking to each other because there's so much, so much cool stuff that you can do. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we can't do uh, like all of this that we're talking about was not possible uh, without Patreon and without our patrons. Uh, seriously, like this wouldn't none of this would have happened without yeah. our patrons we're, supporting us we're probably going to reach 2,000 patrons this week and that is so exciting and it means we're going to be able to do so much more um we're going to be able to you know fly to uh different countries and uh explore different forms of things can't yeah. get too specific yet but uh but it's coming patreons <laughs> certainly know what i'm talking about all right <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode of Now You Know. I'm glad that you watched it all the way to the end. Please hit the like button if you watched it all the way to the end. Uh, it's, the, it's the least you can do. 
It's not true. You can just leave. You know that. Um, but also, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, man. We do this every single week. Yeah. Every week. We've done it for 128 weeks so far. Yeah. We've gone through Christmases. We've, we've been on trips. We've been sick. We've been sick multiple times. Uh, we've been tired. We've not wanted to do it some weeks, but we yeah. do it every week for you. Right. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. Now you know.